The British SAS, or Special Air Service, is one of the world's most elite Special Forces units, known for their bravery, skill, and precision. But what happens when orders go against their moral code? On September 19, 2005, in Basra, Iraq, two British SAS operators were in Iraq on a top-secret mission. The operators were identified only as Alpha-1 and Alpha-2. The country had been in turmoil since the U.S.-led invasion in 2003, and the British military had been tasked with maintaining order in the southern city of Basra. Basra was originally proclaimed a beacon for post-war Iraq, a model of how to hand over control to the local population. But now it was a hotbed of insurgency. The SES had spent weeks observing and infiltrating the Iraqi insurgent groups, which were gradually taking control of the police force that British soldiers were supposed to be working with to restore order. As Alpha-1 and Alpha-2 were finishing their surveillance mission, they were compromised by plainclothes Iraqi policemen. A scuffle ensued, and the SAS operators fired their weapons, wounding an Iraqi policeman. The SAS operators tried to escape, relying on their native garb for protection. But as they were leaving the area, they came upon an Iraqi police checkpoint and decided to try to talk their way out of an increasingly bad situation, but to no avail. They were captured and beaten by corrupt police officers sympathetic to hostile militia groups. The SAS operators stationed in Basra were in shock when they saw their fellow operators being paraded on Iraqi TV, charged with heinous crimes and feared for their safety, especially given the brutalities of the factions fighting against the British forces. The likelihood of those operators surviving more than a few days was narrow at best. The SAS commander in charge of the unit realized that they needed to be rescued immediately, but his unit was too small, so he requested reinforcements from an SAS detachment 300 miles away. The operators equipped themselves with their gear and readied their submachine guns and C-8 carbines before making their way towards a C-130 that was waiting for them. They eagerly prepared to move into action. However, when the SAS team requested permission from the superiors to launch the rescue mission, they were denied. The chain of command feared that any rescue attempt would lead to further casualties in a larger conflict with the insurgents. The officials in London were caught off guard and the response was sluggish. The political climate in newly freed Iraq was unstable. Despite the commander's disbelief at the command, he warned his superior about the perilous situation of leaving the two men in captivity. However, his plea fell on deaf ears as the general repeatedly overruled him. The commander realized that high command didn't care about the lives of his operators. He was furious, but he also knew that leaving his two people to the wolves was not an option. During that pivotal moment, the commander and his unit were confronted with a critical decision. The commander made the bold choice to disregard the orders. The SAS unit got on that C-130 and decided to rescue their mates anyway. Minutes later, the C-130 took off. There was no going back. Once they reached the police station, they were aided by local officials and regular British Army officers. They tried to win the captives' release and resolve the situation peacefully, but every effort to gain permission to get through the gates was ignored. The mob grew around them, forcing them to leave. The armored vehicles were attacked with rocks and Molotov cocktails, and one had to be abandoned by its crew. The situation was getting worse by the hour. The SES launched another rescue attempt with helicopter and mechanized infantry support. But this time they weren't so cordial. They slammed right through the walls of the police station with the help of the armored vehicles. The soldiers rushed out of the vehicles and swarmed the compound. The ear-splitting snap of flashbang grenades sounded in the air. Gunshots rang out as militants who raised their guns quickly fell. Upon entering the station, the SAS encountered a few frightened policemen who surrendered by raising their hands and then were disarmed and handcuffed. 
Initially, the rescue team was unable to locate the captive SAS operators and were concerned that they had been relocated once more. However, during another search of the compound, the task force discovered the two SAS operatives handcuffed inside a bathroom. Although they were bruised and unkempt, they were still alive. The SAS checked them and swiftly moved them out of the compound and into a waiting armored vehicle. The rest of the SAS unit quickly followed and the armored column turned and sped away from the location and successfully made their way back to base. Alpha-1 and Alpha-2 were transported to a hospital for medical attention. Amidst the chaos, however, there were consequences. About a hundred prisoners managed to escape and the Iraqis demanded reparations for the destruction caused. News of the successful rescue raced up the chain of command, through the Ministry of Defense and eventually into the Prime Minister's office. As news of the incident reached the public, the authorities in charge became aware of their embarrassing situation. The thought of punishing the operators, who had just been praised as heroes for rescuing their fellow British troops in Iraq was too bitter to even consider. As a result, the higher-ups opted to authorize the rescue operation, even though they were aware that the mission had already been accomplished. This allowed them to save face and avoid punishing the rescuers, which would have been a bitter pill to swallow given their heroic efforts. Moreover, the government discovered that if they had attempted to impede the mission, the SAS leadership was ready to resign in mass. The British government paid millions of pounds in compensation to the Iraqi government, which included rebuilding the damaged police station. The incident sparked a political debate in the UK about the country's involvement in Iraq. Many people criticized the government's decision to join the war, and the Basra rescue operation was seen as an example of the dangers and consequences of such actions. The SAS unit took a daring risk on that fateful day, staging a mutiny in order to rescue their mates. However, despite the risk, the decision was a calculated one that ultimately proved successful. And the SAS once again lived up to their motto of who dares wins. But let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.